Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. Geeky Sparkles is not here, but she'll be back, don't worry. We're gonna talk about Billy and Mandy, classic, a uh, classic Cartoon Network series that was canceled entirely too soon and why uh, the creator said that they were fired. Apparently they were fired for ruining Cartoon Network. Yeah, that's right. Ruining Cartoon Network. The creator, the showrunner of Billy and Mandy single-handedly ruined Cartoon Network. It wouldn't have anything to do with the endless, endless reruns of Teen Titans Go or uh, the decision to run live action, uh, you know, uh, versions of shows. Uh, yeah, it's because of uh, Billy and Mandy. Sure it is. Sure it is. And it's actually one of the better shows of the last uh, decade or two. Anyway, we're going to talk about that. Uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We do talk a lot about the animation industry. I talk about cartoons. We actually do like cartoons quite a bit. Even if people think we're we're haters, we actually do like cartoons. Uh, you know, we've worked around uh, you know the comic book industry and in and around Disney, and and uh, we got a lot of friends that work in the animation industry. And it's always interesting to hear stories about showrunners on popular Cartoon Network shows and their stories. In fact, we've been kind of following this for a while. Um, the showrunners behind uh, Megas XLR were pretty unhappy with, with how things turned out over there. I think this is about a year or two ago. And uh, they wanted to actually get the rights back to their series so they could continue it and they would have to buy it. And it was like you know, millions of dollars uh, to buy back the rights. And this is kind of the same with um, you know Steven Universe too. Like Rebecca Sugar can't just take Steven Universe to HBO Max or something herself. Uh, or take it to Disney or someplace else if she wanted to continue it. Um, Cartoon Network technically owns Steven Universe, and that's the trade-off. You know, you become a showrunner on a show, they own your show, you know. And in some cases, they don't consult the original showrunners when they bring shows back. Look at what happened with Animaniacs. The original showrunners were not consulted. Uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog. They they did the Courage the Cowardly Dog and Scooby-Doo uh, movie and the the showrunner of Courage Cowardly Dog not even consulted, not even asked. They don't technically they don't have to. Uh, they own your stuff, right? Um, unless you get in writing that they don't. So this was kind of interesting. Had a couple people kick this over to me the other day, and I am going to give a hat tip to Ruben Baron. We don't agree with him all the time. But uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. It was an interesting article. So go out and you know check out the original. But yeah, according to Tumblr. Uh, according to Tumblr, uh, people wondered why, you know, Maxwell Adams isn't working on anything with Adult Swim. And he said, I have a couple ideas I think would kill on Adult Swim. But since the current president is the guy who gave me a public dressing down for ruining Cartoon Network's brand with my hateful fan cart or hateful fart cart, hateful fart cartoon, hateful fart cartoon before promptly firing me. Such a collaboration seems incredibly unlikely. Hateful fart cartoon. Um, so this would be Michael uh, Olin, Olin, the creator of Harvey Birdman, attorney at law. Uh, he's worked for Cartoon Network since 1992. Um, he was the senior VP of development and programming at Cartoon, uh, Cartoon Network from 2006, 2008. Uh, the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy ended in 2007. And the TV movie Under Fist Halloween Bash was meant as, uh, as the pilot to a spinoff series, but said series was ultimately canceled. Yeah, so this is interesting. Why would he blame Billy and Mandy for ruining Cartoon Network's brand? It was actually one of the, the better shows, I think. And Billy and Mandy sort of was, you know, the, the gateway for other similar series. Um, you know, Chowder, I think, is, is underrated. Flapjack. Um, yeah, so very, very weird. Um, since leaving Cartoon Network, Adams has worked on Disney at, or worked at Disney on Fish Hooks and at Warner on Benicula Teen Titans Go, which does air on Cartoon Network and two Scooby Doo movies. Uh, he attempted to produce an independent post apocalyptic adult puppet show called Dead Meat via Kickstarter, but the production fell apart due to issues with expenses and contracts. Uh, he's been good, on good enough terms with the current Cartoon Network management to attempt to pitch a Billy and Mandy sequel movie this past summer. The pitch was ultimately rejected due to kids today not being familiar with the series. Shouldn't matter, though. Or do we have to wait another 10 or 20 years? Um, you know, it really shouldn't matter. But uh, yeah, I mean, 
it, Cartoon Network is really complicated right now, you know, with the Warner Brothers and, and look at what's going on with them canceling a lot of shows that are actually popular and and they do hit a, an older demographic or kind of that tween teen demographic. Infinity Train canceled. Steven Universe is done. You know, I, it seems like they're going after little, little kid stuff. You know, the PJ Masks uh, crowd. Um, anyway, here's another article from The Gamer a couple of years ago. 20 Cartoon Network shows that were canceled for really weird reasons. Uh, 20, whatever happened to Robot Jones, uh, number 20, it got canceled apparently. Uh, whatever happened to Robot Jones was one of Cartoon Network's earliest shows, and for what it had to offer, it was pretty solid. Uh, the cartoon was short-lived since the original creator left and there was a lack of support. Whatever happened to Robot Jones is a perfect example of an underrated cartoon. Uh, when you're waiting for a cartoon to come back from a commercial break, you might have seen the titular character pop up once in a while and wonder of his origins. Yeah, it's just these shows get kind of, they come and go. You know, if they don't take off, Right away, if they don't become like a SpongeBob level hit, a lot of times they get canceled. Uh, Chowder, freaking love Chowder. Chowder is actually one of my favorite Cartoon Network shows of all time. Not pleasing for its demographic. Uh, turns out the older boys were into the live action show Destroy, Build, Destroy instead because you know it was definitely a cartoon to look forward to. If you didn't catch that, it was sarcasm. Uh, it was a shame the show did not end it the way it was supposed to, but Chowder will never be forgotten. I freaking love Chowder. Uh, Misadventures coming to a close. Uh, let's see. Pee Wee Herman was supposed to be Flapjack. That's crazy. Um, he didn't appear on the day of recording. He just, he didn't show up. Wow. That would have been actually kind of cool. Uh, for it to be canceled was a surprise. The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack. There are speculations uh, ranging from a low number of viewers to high production costs. I think this is actually the, the big one right here. Basically, a lot of the cartoons at Cartoon Network uh, is producing right now. A lot of them don't lend themselves well to merchandise. And I hate to say it, and it sounds you know everybody's like, oh, toy cartoon, toy cartoon. But merchandise guarantees, you know, merchandise sales guarantees that the show gets a longer shelf life, literally, because you know they're selling stuff. I don't think SpongeBob would be on for the umpty million years it's been on if if SpongeBob merchandise didn't sell you know, t-shirts and pajamas and plushies and Legos and all that jazz. Uh, Annoying Orange should have stayed on YouTube. The cancellation was because the original creator's studio shut down. Um, it should have stayed on YouTube and YouTube only. I don't, I don't disagree with that. Uh, Annoying Orange didn't really make make for... I, would, they would have been great, like, little interstitials or something, but not a series. The shortest time on Cartoon Network was Robotomy. Robotomy. Um, Robotomy is the shortest running series on Cartoon Network, having only 10 episodes. Uh, it was unfortunately not meant to be for this cartoon. Uh, shorts, it didn't leave an impression. Uh, parody of Mecha done well. Yeah, uh, Megas XLR was actually pretty good. And we know what's going on with that, that they're trying to get the rights back, but it's crazy, crazy expensive. Um, I mean, the reboot wasn't painful. Ben 10. Yeah, uh, Ben 10, the reboot's awful. Andre 3000's Passion Pro Project, Love Class of 3000. That was another one I really, really liked. Uh, the reason the show was canceled was somewhat controversial. Andre 3000 being sued for stealing ideas from former art student named Timothy McGee. However, it was also canceled due to budget constraints for a show that's created by a member of a well-known hip-hop group. That was some scary revelation Cartoon Network had to go through. Wow. Um uh, Juniper Lee. Yeah, it's another one that disappeared. Unclear ending. Um, probably, probably just money. Blame the live action film for the cancellation of Green Lantern. Uh, Clone Wars. You know, they're doing more of it. Um, Symbiotic Titan. What happened? The reason for its cancellation was Jendi, uh, Jendi Tarkovsky moved on to Sony Pictures Animation. Titan got competitive ratings with other action shows. But what shut it down was it didn't have enough toys connected to it. There it is, guys. Toys. If you don't have the toy sales, the studios don't want to renew for another season. Everybody keeps going on about, you know, uh, classic 80s shows, 90s shows being toy commercials. They kind of have to be. If you want this stuff to survive, again, you can't just, you know, survive on ad revenue. You have to have merchandise sales. In Japan, with anime projects, they always plan the merchandise and the video games alongside of, of the series. The creator wanted to move on for Powerpuff Girls. 
Um, you know, and he moved on to Foster's, which was again, another excellent show. And unfortunately this is, this is another case of, Hey, he didn't own it. So they could reboot it again. And again, courage, cowardly dog, um, was canceled. The reasons have not yet been confirmed. Some say the show was too scary for kids, which could be a logical answer. I think it would have worked well in adult swim. Others say there's some sort of symbolism between the two female characters and domestic violence in one episode titled The Mask. I don't know. Breaking up with Cartoon Network. Hi, hi, Puffy Amiyumi uh, canceled. But nobody knows why. Nobody knows why. It might have been mentioned during the 20th anniversary of Cartoon Network, but when the cartoon left the spotlight, there were episodes unaired, no support for the DVD release. That was weird. Uh, yeah, Thundercats. Now, this one's controversial. I know we have people that weigh in on this. I always thought it was toy sales. What'd they say? Uh, the creator of the reboot, Dan Norton, confirmed the news of its cancellation after just one season. Tragic. Again, one of the, the best reboots of an 80s series ever. Uh, Thundercats 2011 and He-Man 2002. It was going to have 52 episodes, but it ended up with 26. It was very tragic since Norton grew up with the show and poured his heart and soul into the project. Who knows what will happen? They didn't say. Um, I have heard toy sales. Toy sales were a big part of it. The toys did not sell. It was a very expensive show. Um, again, there are a lot of people out there that have followed this a lot more closely than I have. I unfortunately didn't watch a show very much during its original run. It wasn't until a couple of years later that I watched it. I'm like, damn, this is what, this is what they should have brought back instead of, uh, Thundercats roar for sure. Too much at the time, Samurai Jack. Um, you know, it was too, there was too much violence. Uh, and of course we know what happened. Young justice, it got canceled and then they, they're bringing it back, you know, a couple times now they're on, were they on season four? I think now, and the network's biggest mistake, the original teen Titans. Yeah. Uh, instead we get teen Titans go the show ended abruptly with Tara leaving beast boy to live her life. Uh, as a high school student, cartoon network definitely made a huge mistake in canceling it. I agree. Teen Titans ended up being canceled because the story pitched to Cartoon Network was never greenlit by executives because of that. We're treated with an ending that was somehow fitting but rushed and depressing. Um, yeah, it was expensive. This is why, again, this is why they're doing Teen Titans Go and not, not Teen Titans. But um, very hard to get a show picked up by Cartoon Network for a variety of reasons. And I do think the, the future of animation is you know going to look a lot like you know, hell of a boss, or, um, Vivzy pop, you know, uh, doing your own thing on a, a social media platform, getting a following and then finding a way to bankroll it yourself. Uh, because more and more, you know, these companies, these streamers, they want shows that fit a certain demographic and that changes. I mean, it changes all the time. And now because, you know, Coco Melon is so popular, everybody's chasing preschool cartoons. You know, everybody's chasing uh, faux anime, uh, American anime, and and these kinds of cartoons. You know, classic Cartoon Network series or shows that are for teenagers and young adults. They're they're kind of a dying breed. Uh, they get canceled quickly. They don't you know pay for themselves, unfortunately, unless they have a lot of merchandise. Um, it is what it is. But that's really interesting. That uh, yeah, the creator of Billy and Mandy is being single handedly. Uh, told that he ruined Cartoon Network. And I'm sorry, I think Cartoon Network ruined themselves a long time ago. Going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.